With a little luck, the holidays give us an opportunity to catch up on games we've been meaning to play. It's especially nice if you get to play some indie games that ended up on our account for some reason. So here are four games from small development houses that I played this season, worth exploring in detail. We'll start with Moonlighter, which is a game I was super excited to play. Having loved Stardew Valley, similar games have become much more interesting to me. So when someone made a game in that style, where you explore dungeons and run your own shop, I was all on board. Unfortunately, Moonlighter suffers from not having much else besides those dynamics to keep it going. I mean, yes, you explore randomly generated dungeons in the style of classic Zelda and get sweet, sweet loop for your shop. Then the game goes one step further by teaching you supply and demand, leading you to adjust prices to keep your customers happy. This works well enough, but it starts to get repetitive very quickly. Every time you access a new dungeon, you end up with a new tier of valuables and have to work out pricing all over again. Then you can afford the gear to explore more dangerous dungeons to get better stock for your business. You see what's happening here. You start finding lots of stuff, which also leads us to another problem. The game never lets you upgrade your backpack storage space. I mean, of all the things I needed to improve, it was my carrying capacity. You let me buy an Emporium. How can I keep it full of stuff if I'm limited to 20 inventory slots, Moonlighter? Hey, hey, I told you not to come back in here. Hey, get, come back here, come back here, give me that back. You get, get out of my store. Every time. Probably the biggest disappointment is that you don't have much interaction with characters in town. No NPC stories, no dialogue trees, no buildings to enter, no tavern to visit. The most meaningful relationship you get is with the old man who gives you guff every time you complete one of the dungeons. What is wrong, dude? It's just the dungeons, your store, and the vendors. And they don't want to have a conversation, they just like you for your money. And the ending? Ah! Uh, uh, apparently there were like space pirates and the dungeons are portals to other dimensions and the galactic police come in to shut down the dungeons, but oops, you've already been in them and oh well, you got that nasty pirate, so we won't arrest you and you can still go in them if you want or something. It, it felt really tacked on, like the developers didn't know how to wrap things up, so some law dudes from the cosmos come in to do some exposition and then peace out. I mean, it's fun while it lasts, but it just ends up a shallow experience by the end. Now, I could say the complete opposite of Celeste, a platformer featuring a story about mental health and overcoming your limitations. The story and characters are well-made and insightful. The concept of Madeline wrestling with this dark version of herself is very humanizing. Trying to rectify an interior struggle to achieve exterior goals is a beautiful example of storytelling through games. And then we get to the gameplay, which is terrific! Assuming you've turned on assist mode and given yourself unlimited boosts and invulnerability. If you didn't, it's controller throwing insane! Which I get mirrors Madeline's story arc of overcoming adversity. The problem is, you either want to invest the time to get good at the massive platforming challenge ahead of you, or you simply want to see how the game ends. To its credit, I'm glad the game gives you the option of making yourself a superhero if you want, because I would have likely walked away from it otherwise. It's just too many floor spikes for my taste. At least it let me see the ending, which is a wholly satisfying wrap-up to your journey. The characters are very relatable, even when it seems surreal. It has the kind of emotional weight by the end that belies its old-school style. Problem is, the gameplay feels like I'm trying to teach a room full of cats how to file tax returns while spinning a plate full of tuna on my head, which those same cats are trying to eat. Now, if they could only make a game with engaging gameplay, and well-developed character arcs in this style. Like if Moonlighter and Celeste had a baby. Guess we'll never know what that looks like. Moving away from the pixel art games, I jumped into the physics puzzles of Cube 2. Or... Cube 2? No, I think it's Cube. Having not played the original Cube, I'm not sure if I missed much of the story, but I could follow what was happening. 
You play Lara Croft, I think. Hello? Sounds a lot like her. This is Dr. Amelia Cross. I is she voiced by Camilla I repeat, No? I am reading you oh, clearly. you could have fooled me. Anyway, you control these cubes that allow you to access out-of-the-way consoles to move through all the chapters. You can turn cubes red to make them extend, blue to make things bounce, and green to spawn movable cubes. I can proudly say that I completed the entire game without walkthroughs. I almost quit in frustration, even deleting the game from my Xbox, when my game froze in Chapter 11 and reloaded at the beginning of Chapter 10. Oh god, no! Then, out of curiosity, I looked up a walkthrough, only to find out that I literally completed the very last puzzle and was about to finish the game. So I reinstalled it and ran through the puzzles in about 30 minutes so I could see one of the two endings. The story is still basically a conduit for puzzle adventures, and it's not on the level of Portal, but difficulty ramps up at a consistent pace and does make you rethink how mechanics work as time goes on. I mean, Lara is really good at puzzles, right? I think my biggest issue is that anyone playing it will either find it too long or too short, too hard or too easy, such is the plight of physics puzzles. If you imagine looking at a standard puzzle, when something doesn't work right, you assume it's not the solution. However, with physics puzzles, you might have just gotten the timing or spacing wrong, so you might give up on the right solution. Puzzle games are a nice distraction for me, but they are by no means my preferred style of game. I just imagine a puzzle designer sitting at a computer thinking, Oh, now this is gonna mess with them good! You look at the puzzle, realize someone worked real hard to implement all the mechanics in a clever way, and solve it with little trouble. Of course, I would never want to tell that poor designer, because it's like when Batman instantly solves the Riddler's latest brain teaser. This is all they have. On the opposite end, we have Race the Sun, a unique game where you, go figure, race the sun. No puzzles to be had, just moving through the landscape to try and get as far as you can, as fast as you can. Of course, it gets a little sulk-inducing. I kept getting kicked back to the beginning after each crash, realizing I was going to need multiple attempts before I could do even the most basic upgrades to my ship. Then my mind wandered to thoughts of, am I just upgrading my ship so I can try to get closer to the sun? Which is a question Icarus wished he had avoided. The sun starts to dip under the horizon and you look for time extenders to keep going before you, I, I don't know, freeze to death. But then I realized there was an endless mode, something made for those who want a kind of zen-like experience. I felt a sense of serenity wash over me as I listened to the ambient soundtrack curving my way through the landscape's geometry. Overall, these games had some real merits. They offer very different experiences and appeal to specific types of gamers. I mean, sure, I could offer alternative titles in each genre, but the unique qualities each possesses show why indie games are a font of creative expression in these days when the AAA marketplace has become... Oh, so disheartening. I think I'll just keep cruising toward that distant sunset. Zero out of ten. Oh, not this guy. Hey. Hey. No, oh. Okay, I gotta do this sale. Don't you, don't you look at that merchant. No, 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 no. I know what you're up to. Merch, oh, oh, you little bast. Okay, there you go. Get out of my shop. Get out. I'll tell you, it's getting real difficult being a small business owner in a video game these days. Just have constant the- Oh, not you again!